Hello everyone and welcome back. So I'm really excited to bring you a video about the Terra network. So this was something that was highly requested in the DeFi innovation chat. Uh, if you're interested in joining that community, the link to the telegram is below. So let's get started and dive into the Terra network. Uh, we do have a lot to cover. As you can see in this picture here, the Terra network is quite large and there are a lot of developments that are coming. But I think uh, before we get into any of that, you have to understand how the Luna token works and how UST or their stablecoin mechanic works. So Terra is its own ecosystem and blockchain that basically runs on proof of stake. Now in the Terra network, there are only 100 validators and these are basically selected uh, because they're the largest holders of the Luna token. So because Terra follows the proof of stake model, the network's able to process significantly more transactions than a proof of work network like Ethereum would be able to. The Terra network can also process transactions significantly cheaper than Ethereum. So if a token swap on Ethereum would cost say $30, on the Terra network, it might only cost a dollar or even less than that. The downside of that is that the Terra network is significantly less decentralized than a network like Ethereum. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are only 100 validators, so uh, the network is much easier to attack than a network like Ethereum would be. Now, as I mentioned, that Luna token is really central to the Terra network, uh, but the other central component to the network are the stable coins that are tied to the Luna token. So if you look here on this graph, uh, Terra has released a significant amount of stable coins. The most common one is UST, which is the US dollar stable coin, uh, but they do offer several other stable coins uh, based on other fiat currencies as well. Now the way Terra pegs its stable coins is somewhat similar to how Frax does, so you can check out my videos if you want a bit of a deeper dive, but I'm gonna go through a quick explanation of how uh, the Terra protocol is able to keep these coins at peg. So these stable coins basically work through arbitrage opportunities. So when the price of UST trades, say, above $1, arbitragers can then leverage the Luna token to mint more UST at that $1 peg and then sell it on the open market for whatever price UST is trading at. So if UST is currently at $1.05, anyone can come in and mint UST at a $1 price and then sell it on the open market for that profit. If demand for one of these stable coins like UST falls, uh, basically that loss of value is transferred to the Luna holders. So the Luna holders have their supply diluted and that extra supply is used to increase the price of UST or that stable coin to bring it back up to peg. So that essentially means that if the stable coin is trading below peg, you can always sell it for $1 worth of the Luna token. This means that the Luna token basically reaps the rewards or pays the price based on a supply uh, contraction or expansion in the stablecoin market. So as you can see, the value of the Luna token and these stablecoins are very closely tied together. As the Terra ecosystem grows and then demand for these fiat currency grows, uh, the Luna token price should appreciate as well. Now, if you want to participate in the Terra network, it's fairly simple. Uh, they have their own mobile wallet extension that you can download for Chrome as well as many other popular browsers. Setup is fairly easy and you can use the same seed phrase that you have for your Bitcoin or Ethereum wallets as well. Terra also has the Terra Bridge, and as you can see here, you can send assets from Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain to Terra and vice versa. Right now, the network basically supports Luna, uh, the Fiat stablecoins, and then the Mirror assets. Now, that's a great segue into the Mirror protocol. I'll go through it at a very high level, but if you're interested in learning more, I've included a link to my last video in the description below. Uh, there, I basically give a deep dive into the Mirror protocol and the different strategies you can take if you're looking to yield firm. But just at a high level, uh, the Mirror protocol basically brings assets like stocks onto the blockchain. The protocol exists on Ethereum and also on Terra. Now, my last video was about Mirror on the Ethereum network. Now, you can do all of the same operations there, but the gas costs are going to be pretty significant. The big driver that Terra has right now is that transactions are extremely cheap. So as you can see here, there's about $2.1 billion of total value locked, and then there's about $450 million worth of M assets. So Mirror is really the biggest use case of the Terra network right now. Now, the second main app uh, that Terra has is called the Anchor Protocol. So the Anchor Protocol's goal, as you can see here, is to become the benchmark rate of DeFi. So the Anchor Protocol derives its yield from basically allowing anyone to participate in that proof of stake model. So as I mentioned before, there are only 100 validators in the Terra network, and this is based on how much Luna one holds. So if you're a top 100 Luna holder, you can become an official validator. But if you're not a top 100 holder, basically anyone can help participate in the network's validation process, through the Anchor protocol. So as you can see here, there's a TLDR, but I'm gonna do my best to break that down for you. Of course, if you wanna learn more, the link is in the description below. Now, the first step here is that governance sets what they call the Anchor rate. 
Now the anchor rate is that fixed APR uh, that the anchor protocol is trying to set as a return on your stable coins. So right now that's set at 20%. So if you deposit $1,000, you're going to make 20% per year on that. The second thing the protocol does is it basically stakes all of those locked up assets into the proof of stake mechanism behind the whole Terra network itself. Now this return is what they call the real yield. Now if the real yield, which is what you're getting from participating in the proof of stake mechanism, is higher or lower than what governance sets, uh, the protocol is actually able to adjust that yield to make sure that they're always hitting the governance set uh, yield rate, which again is currently 20%. So as you can see here, if the real yield is above the anchor rate, which is again set at 20%, the excess yield is stored in UST, which is a stable coin, and denominated as yield reserve. Now in addition, anchor has its own token called the ANC token, and if the actual rate of return is higher than 20% of that set rate, uh, the protocol will actually lower ANC incentives to borrowers by about 15% each week. So all of this will help push the return down to 20% if it's currently higher than that. Now if the real yield, which is the proof of stake yield, is lower than the governance set anchor rate, the shortfall is initially drawn from the yield reserve until it is depleted. In addition, if the yield is still too low, uh, the anchor protocol releases more of that ANC token to incentivize borrowers uh, to basically borrow more capital. So as you can see here on the Anchor dashboard, the deposit APY is currently pegged at 20% and the borrow APR is 35%. So that means currently the Anchor protocol is succeeding in its goal of delivering a stable 20% APY. Now as you can see on the borrow tab, uh, what's happening is really fascinating. So they're actually incentivizing people to borrow more from the protocol right now. So as you can see here, the net APR is a positive 71%, so you're basically getting paid to borrow. So you can see it does cost 35% a year to borrow, uh, but they're also distributing 106% APR a year of that ANC token, and so that nets out to a positive 71.3% borrow APR. What that means is you're basically getting paid to borrow. Now if you are a big believer in Luna uh, and the Terra protocol, one option here is to uh, basically bond up your Luna, which means B Luna or bonded Luna. Now what you would do then is you would stake your B Luna token as collateral and you could borrow UST against that and actually get paid in the ANC token to borrow. So aside from the Mirror Protocol and Anchor, you know, what else is on the Terra network? One of the things they're really trying to tackle is the payments process. Right now, a lot of that action is happening in South Korea, uh, but if we take a look, quick look at the dashboard of Chai, which is one of their payment systems here, uh, you can see they process uh, 1.7 uh, South Korean won, and that's equivalent to about 1.5 million US dollars a day. Now these numbers seem impressive, um, but they're really not at a huge scale yet, and it's tough to say you know, what percentage of these active users or transactions are legitimate. In addition to Chai, uh, there's also Pay with Terra, and I'll link that below. So the Pay with Terra platform helps um, anyone integrate crypto payments into their website, uh, and it also helps track the order flow for them. So something really interesting in this space, um, and it, it's great to see this type of innovation. So those are all the real significant apps and features that are on Terra today, uh, but I want to touch on briefly what they're building for the future. So first up is Cash. Uh, basically the goal of this is to be a checking account for crypto and for Terra in general. Um, so they say that you'll be able to store your money and also buy synthetic assets like Tesla and Apple. They also want to process payments and it looks like they'll have some type of card solution as well. And next up is Spar.Finance. Uh, you can see here it's a decentralized asset management platform. Uh, basically they say it works as easy as one, two, three. Uh, you just deposit capital into one of the preset strategies and then receive rewards for doing that. So that pretty much covers everything I think you need to know about the Terra protocol right now. Now obviously I couldn't cover everything. There's really a lot going on with this network here, but I think I gave you the most important products and features that you need to keep an eye out on. Now if you're interested in the Luna token itself, I'd highly recommend that you do a deep dive into the tokenomics of the project. I didn't touch on that in this video because I think that deserves, you know, maybe its own video potentially. Um, there's really a lot to go into there but if it's something you're interested in definitely reach out in the innovation chat or on Twitter uh, the links to those are below now for my closing thoughts I don't think Terra is an ethereum killer but I do think the Terra protocol is innovating in really new and exciting ways and that's just going to push ethereum and the DeFi space in general forward which is something I'm very excited about of course as I mentioned if you have any questions you can leave a comment below but a better way to reach me is in the innovation chat uh, the community is also very helpful there and can pretty much answer any question you have about Terra or any other project in DeFi. So thank you all for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.